following precautions should be observed when handling lead acid batteries. Warning, battery electrolyte will burn the skin and destroy clothing. When working with batteries or electrolyte, wear appropriate clothing and equipment. If electrolyte is splashed and spilled on the body or clothing, flush with cool, clear water. Do not wear finger rings when working with batteries. Do not use flame or spark producing devices in the area where batteries are kept or serviced. No smoking. Refer to the material safety data sheet and the Gill service manual for detailed safety precautions. Gill has been manufacturing quality batteries since 1920. Today, Teledyne's Gill aircraft battery is the most advanced lead acid battery in the world, storing 45% more cranking or spooling power than could be packed into comparable batteries of earlier years. But to obtain this sort of performance over a long period of time requires carefully preparing the battery for service and faithfully maintaining throughout its life. The most critical time in the life of a Gill lead acid battery is its wet down and initial charging. Although the wet down alone will bring the battery up to 70 to 75 percent of its full charge, using the battery without an initial charge will reduce both the performance and the useful lifespan of that battery. Always fully charge the battery before putting it into service. Here's how you wet down and charge the new Gill battery. Unpack the battery. Use handles or lift the body of the battery. Never lift a gill battery by its vent tubes or Elcon connector. Inspect the battery to determine that there has been no shipping or handling damage. Make sure that you have the correct electrolyte, that is electrolyte having a specific gravity of 1285. Electrolytes of other concentrations will seriously reduce the cranking and emergency power of the battery, especially at temperature extremes. Remove the storage seals, then add enough electrolyte to each cell to just cover the separators. Be careful not to spill the liquid on the top of the battery. A film of electrolyte on the battery top can discharge the battery in a short period of time. Do not underestimate the importance of keeping the top of the battery clean. After electrolyte has been added to each cell, install the vent caps and let the battery sit for one hour. During that hour, occasionally rock the battery from side to side to release any trapped air. Check each cell, and if the electrolyte level has fallen below the top of the separators, add electrolyte to restore the initial level. Be sure to replace the vent caps before charging the battery. If vent caps are not installed, the top of the battery may become sprayed with electrolyte, which will cause the battery to self-discharge unless the battery is thoroughly cleaned. If possible, charge the battery using a constant current charger, which does a faster, more efficient job than a constant voltage charger. Teledyne can supply this type of charger. Be sure that you adjust the charge rate to that specified in the instructions packed with the new battery or in the Gill service manual. Never attempt to speed the charging by using a higher than specified current. This could permanently damage the battery. While charging, keep cell temperatures below 115 degrees Fahrenheit. Using a constant current charger, it will take from 18 to 24 hours to fully charge the battery. If a constant voltage charger is used, it could take twice as long. After the first hour of charging, check the electrolyte level in each cell. The level should have risen just to the bottom of the split ring. If the level is lower, add electrolyte. If electrolyte appears above that level, remove the excess with a syringe. Be sure to replace the vent caps. Clean up and neutralize any spilled electrolyte. When using a constant current charger, you will know that the battery is fully charged when the voltage measured across the battery has not risen for at least two hours. A small hydrometer such as the Gill FR1 is the best tool for measuring the state of charge. An automotive or industrial hydrometer may not be able to gather enough electrolyte to provide an accurate reading. 
The Gill hydrometer indicates a range of specific gravity from 1100 to 1300. A fully charged Gill battery will have shown a specific gravity of 1285 to 1300 for three consecutive hours. Be sure to read the hydrometer at the electrolyte's lowest level, disregarding the surface curvature. Before disconnecting the fully charged battery from the charger, again check electrolyte levels and add or remove electrolyte, if necessary, to maintain the level just at the bottom of the split rings. After you remove the battery from the charger, neutralize any spillage on the top of the battery. Be sure that vent caps are on tight because just a small quantity of baking soda in a cell will significantly reduce its power. Ordinary baking soda and water is the best neutralizer. Wash the battery top thoroughly with clean water and dry the entire battery before installing it or putting it away. To test a battery for traces of spilled electrolyte, connect the negative lead of a voltmeter to the negative battery terminal and run the positive probe over the battery top. Any voltage indicates a current drain between cells or between cells and a terminal which will discharge the battery in a short period of time. Cleaning and neutralizing the battery will eliminate this problem. Before installing the battery in the aircraft, check electrical connectors for corrosion and good contact surfaces. They should be checked for pitting and contact of mating surfaces. Check the final installation to make sure that vent hoses are secure and are not kinked. The use of a sump jar is recommended in the battery vent system. Different styles are available from your Gill distributor. After the battery is installed, check the aircraft's voltage regulator to be sure it's providing the correct charging voltage. Refer to the aircraft manufacturer's manual and the Gill service manual for recommended voltage regulator settings. If the voltage is too low, the battery will not be kept fully charged. If the voltage is too high, excessive gassing will occur, resulting in more rapid loss of water and shortened battery life. To maximize the life and performance built into a Gill battery, check the battery periodically for its state of charge, electrolyte level, and general condition. If aircraft service consists largely of short flights and frequent engine starts, check the battery more often. Slower spooling speed and higher starting temperatures may be an indication that the battery could require recharging or replacement. It may also be the result of poor battery connections or other aircraft component problems. Recharge the battery whenever specific gravity falls below 1260 or if the aircraft has been out of service for more than 30 days. An unused battery will self-discharge at a rate of approximately one point of specific gravity every 24 hours. A dirty battery can self-discharge at three times that rate. Here are a few rules for adding water to the battery and for servicing the sump jar. When you add water to the battery, fill each cell just to the bottom of the split ring while the battery is warm and in a good state of charge. For example, check the battery and add water just after a bench charge or following a flight of an hour and a half or so. Do not add water if the battery is cold or in a low state of charge unless electrolyte is lower than a quarter inch above the plates. A higher level in this state may cause the battery to overflow as the electrolyte expands during a long flight. Check and clean the sump jar every 200 hours of operation or if there has been an overflow. If the battery needs to be recharged, it should be removed from the aircraft and serviced in a designated area. Charging or cleaning the battery in the aircraft is not recommended. Check and record the specific gravity of each cell. If necessary, add enough water to cover the separators. Then charge the battery until the specific gravity stabilizes with all cells reading between 1260 and 1300 for three consecutive hours. Add only distilled or demineralized water. Never add electrolyte unless it has been lost by spillage or diluted by addition of excess water. Charge the battery with all vent caps securely installed. If the specific gravity for any cell will not come up to its recommended operating range, 
The battery may be badly sulfated as a result of being unused or may have been completely discharged. Continue charging at 10% of the one hour discharge rate until the specific gravity reaches its normal operating range. This procedure could require 48 to 72 hours. Adjust electrolyte to the bottom of the split ring, being careful not to overfill the cell. Every gill battery is rated at the 30 minute emergency capacity specification and is considered serviceable to 80% of that rating. For example, a 24 volt battery must provide its rated current for at least 24 minutes to the minimum cutoff voltage of 1.75 volts per cell, that is 21 volts. Remember that the battery must be recharged following the test. Many turbine aircraft have been converted from NICAD to gill lead acid batteries. If you were to perform a conversion, ask your gill distributor for the proper STC, which will include a kit containing the parts and accessories necessary for proper installation. The STC kit includes instructions for deactivating heat sensing or current monitoring equipment required for NICAD batteries. This equipment is not necessary for lead acid batteries. Teledyne has obtained STCs for most popular turbine powered aircraft. Your Gill dealer can give you a current list of available STC kits. If an STC has not been developed for the aircraft you're working on, Perform installation using FAA Field Approval Form 337. Follow the guidelines given in FAA Advisory Circular 43.13, covering lead acid battery installations. No matter what battery procedure you are performing, refer to the Gill Service Manual for supplementary or detailed instruction. Following the simple procedures we have just reviewed and which are detailed in the service manual will help your gill battery operate at peak performance. Remember that the key to maximum power and long life is keeping your battery at or near full charge at all times. <laughs>